All right. And now let us say hello to the man who will be headlining the December 5th UFC Fight Night event against Jack Hermanson. It was supposed to be Jack Hermanson versus Darren Till, but we found out last week Darren Till has unfortunately had to withdraw from the event. So in enters Kevin Holland, who is 4-0 in 2020. If he wins on December 5th, he'll be 5-0 and he'll be just the third fighter in modern UFC history to go 5-0 in one year. The other two, of course, Roger Huerta, Neil Magny. We may add Kevin Holland's name to that list. This is very exciting stuff. First off, Kevin, thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Good to talk to you. Nah, no, thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's start with this particular fight. Um, when were you approached about fighting Jack Hermanson in a little less than a month? Uh, I think the day after my birthday, so like November 6th, no later than November 7th, you know, they asked me, I said, yeah. Okay, so they called you. You didn't campaign. This is one of those fights that kind of we didn't know Darren Till was out yet, right? So they called you and asked you if you'd want to step in. Yeah, I kind of heard from a little birdie that you know there there might be something open in the in the topper fights. So I kind of like messaged Mick Maynard and was like, "Yo, what's up with?" uh, I was like, "How's Joe Romero doing this year? I haven't seen him fight." And he was like, "He's, "He's injured." And I was like, "Oh, I was like, well, you know." I was like, you know, Kelvin trying to make any money and, you know, just throwing out names, trying to see who was available. And I was like, well, if you got anybody, you know, top 15, anybody, I mean, anybody, I'll fight them. Let me know. I'm trying to get one more fight this year, two more fights this year. It'd be nice. And then, you know, I guess you could say happy birthday to me. Pop goes the weasel. You know, I get a good little fight. Nice. Yeah. A great fight against a top contender in a main event slot. What was your reaction when they offered you? This is a big step up, right? I mean, you've been fighting uh, consistently, but you're not fighting necessarily known or ranked opponents. Everyone knows Jack. Everyone's impressed by him. He's coming off a great win, and it's a main event. What was your reaction when you got this call? I don't even really, be honest with you, man, it's probably not cool to say, but I don't really worry about the opponents. You know, and it's like, I just worry about the date. You know, if you've noticed anything from 2020, People have a habit of pulling out of fights. Things have a habit of happening. You know, who's to say Jack won't get hurt and I'll have to fight somebody else December 5th? You know, so it's like, who knows? You know, it's nice. I was just happy to get the fight. Doesn't you weren't really a little more excited? I mean, this is a bit, this, this, this to me signals like a turning point in your career, right? Main event. Now you, once you start fighting ranked guys and start beating them, there's no turning back, right? There was no different kind of feelings inside when this became a reality. I mean, I got a new contract because I was already heading into my uh, fourth fight, which would have been the last fight with contract. So I knew I was getting a contract, a new contract. So I just get happy when the numbers go up. You know, that's how that's how we pay the bills, you know. So as long as the numbers are going up, you know, that's all I'm really happy about. Who I'm fighting doesn't really make a difference. You know, everybody thinks that I'm uh, – I mean, there's a few guys on the radar that I would love to smack just because they, they think it's something soft about your boy. But, you know, it don't really matter, you know. Mm-hmm. People pull out, I show up. That's all that matters. Are you happy with the amount that the numbers went up for this particular contract? I'm happy that it gave me an opportunity. I'm happy that fighting Jack, you know, taking a main event fight possibly gave me an opportunity to get added onto the video game. That's what I'm worried about. You know what Come I mean? On. If you guys watch me, I'm like EA Sports put me in the game. So, you know what You're I mean? You're not I'm in the game as of right now? Huh? You're not in the game as of right now? No, I'm not on the game yet. I'm working on it, though. I'm trying to get in that game. I, I'm on strike, man. I don't even play the game no more because I'm not in it. You know, I just call of duty only right now. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Um, the good news is, you know, I'm good buddies with the, the ratings adjuster or whatever the hell he calls himself, Daniel Cormier. So perhaps I could put in a good word for you. Are you telling me that the, the potential, the eventual 2020 fighter of the year as of November, whatever it is, eighth or something, is not in the game? That's insane to me. That's a travesty. Yeah, but DC said I'm not fighter of the year. And you know, we all know what DC says goes. So, you know. Well, okay, so let's address this. So if you win this, you're fighter of the year, in my opinion, 5-0, and oh, you'd certainly be on the short list, right? You'd be a candidate. You would certainly be like one of the top three, four guys that have to be considered. DC squashed that. He said, he said on Monday's show, like, it's not all about like lollipops and rainbows and stuff like that. You need to have a belt to be considered fighter of the year. And I saw you right on the ESPN MMA Instagram page, whatever DC goes. I feel like you were being a little facetious there. You were saying like, hey, DC, who are you to say, right? I mean, like, you kind no, of feel like, not at all. Oh, no? Definitely. Definitely wasn't saying that. No, nah, come I mean, on. It it'd be nice to have the plaque. It'd be nice to get the award. That's cool, but I'm not really I'm not really worried about it. You know, it's like uh, I don't really worry about a whole lot of stuff. You know, it's like 
I'd be chilling, bro. So, you know, so it's like if they don't want to give me fighter of the year, that's perfectly fine. Do I deserve fighter of the year if I go out and smoke Jack? Yeah, for sure, for sure. As long as Jack don't pull out and I actually get to fight Jack, you know, or I actually get to fight somebody in the top like that and I smoke them before the year is over with. I mean, five wins in a year, that's awesome. They could have gave me November 21st, you know, against Perry and then gave me Jack, you know, December 5th, and then there would have been no question who fighter of the year is, right? But at the end of the day, catch it another year. It doesn't really matter. You were campaigning for the Perry fight, right? Once uh, Robbie yeah. Lawler pulled out? Yeah. Were you ever in the running, to the best of your knowledge? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I think the fight would be fun. You know, uh, I got a little. I got a little message said that if it was up to him, he would have, he would have fought Neil Magny. That fight would have been nice too. But uh, he got Tim Means, so you know it is what it is. You know, I, I think Perry plays around with the idea that he would fight me, but that doesn't do anything for him. You know, that's a that's a probably a guaranteed loss. I wouldn't do that if I was him. Okay, just going back to a previous question, I asked you, were you happy with the way the numbers went up? And your response was about the video game. You can't possibly be telling me that you care more about being in the video game than your your paycheck, right? I mean, it's 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 a. I honestly feel like it's a part of the paycheck. I feel like uh, I feel like you know, I feel like you know, the more media things I get and the more things I get to go on, I feel like it kind of helps me get more money outside of just being in the UFC. So mm -hmm. it's like the numbers went up. Yes, I'm very happy with the way the numbers went up. Could the numbers have went up more? Probably. I'm mm -hmm. not really stressing. I'm making more money than anybody else in the family is making right now. I'm making more money than the homies are making right now. So I'm in the front running until I got to make more. I'm chilling, you know, and they're on my butt. So I might have to make more pretty soon. Are, are more coming out of the woodwork now that you're starting to get a lot more attention in the world of MMA? Uh, sponsors? No, I mean, like, you know, cousins, friends, family, you know, you said they're on your butt, you know, <laughs> you're making more. Are people coming out trying to, you know, cozy up to you? No, nah, they know how I get down. They know I'm put it. Okay. Um, you seem like a very sort of, you know, cool guy, like less at fair. Nothing really bothers you. You don't worry about too much. Um, does anything, like what annoys you? What what gets you upset? What irks you? Uh, I, don't, I don't like to be played with and, you know, and like, a, don't play with me like I'm a kid because I'm not a kid. Uh, if I don't know you, don't talk to me like I know you. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that annoy me, but I just don't often show it. You know, you don't get mad, you get even. So you just, you don't let much bother you, you know? And and to that point, it feels like you're on a mission this year, 2020. And I know this has kind of been a part of your your career. You take fights on short notice. I believe uh, you fought the the future Bellator middleweight champion, Rafael Lovato, back in the early days of your career on one day's notice, right? Um, way yeah, back in the it. day. Yeah, yeah, or two it. days. Yeah, I mean, like you, you've done this before, but it feels like 2020, like you've made a conscious effort to let the world know that you're going to step up, that you're available, that you want to fight every single week. Was this a part of, you know, you ended last year on a loss, right? Um, it snapped yeah. a, a winning streak. Was this a part of your your mindset, your game plan going to this year that it was time to take a, a next step or to be more active? Was this a part of the plan for Kevin Hall? No, the game plan was really just to beat a few people that beat Brandon Allen and then rematch Brandon Allen and get that win back. <laughs> that was it. Uh, yeah, that was the goal. But no, the only reason why I'm doing so much better at being able to take these last second fights and actually doing work in these last second fights is I have to give a big shout out to my coaches. You know what I mean? Travis Luter and then, of course, Suge with CD Powertrain. It's like, you know, and even Lamb, even the Lamb Striking System. Lamb Striking System, they have a system over there where I pull up and it just feels like you're you're chilling on the block with the homies, you know? So it's always fun going there. I've been going to Looters since I was 18 years old. I'm 28 now. So it's like, you know, I don't like sitting at home and not seeing the bros. So I go to the gym, go hang out with the bros, get some training in, you know, choke each other out. That's just how we have fun. And then CD Powertrain. You know, I've always done my technical stuff because I like martial arts, but conditioning and staying in shape and stuff like that. He's always on my head. So unless I'm injured, I'm going to be in shape, you know, and that's just the way it goes. There's nothing else to do. I mean, what else is there to do? Play video games after a while, smoke a little green. You know, after a while, you know, it's probably time to go train. So I go train. Uh, I, I love the uh, the partnership that you have with Travis Luter. Newer fans may not know who he is, but uh, this is a guy who's been in the UFC, fought Anderson Silva, unfortunately, Miss Wade prior to the fight, uh, but, you know, won the ultimate fighter, UFC 67, I believe, off the top of my head. Uh, you know, one of the greats, especially on the ground. What's he like as a coach? Uh, he was sort of like a, you know, an even, kind of, I mean, to a degree like you, just seemed like a guy who didn't get phased by much, but as a coach, what's he like? Yeah, same way, man. He doesn't, uh, 
I don't know. He's changed over the years. It's actually, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, of course I grow as a, as a, you know, a young kid coming into the gym, turning into an adult and then uh, watching him just change over the years, you know, for the better, not for the worse, for the better. I mean, it's like, I don't know, dude, it's hard to explain unless you hang out with Travis and really get to know him. You know, you just wouldn't understand, you know, he's a short person when it comes to talking to you, he ain't going to hold a long conversation unless <laughs> it's about something he likes. If it's about something he likes, he's going all the way in. And it's, uh, it's amazing how much that guy knows, you know, and not just martial arts, just overall knowledge, just a knowledgeable person. So it's amazing having Travis kind of like a father figure to me. He is like a father figure to me. And it's wild, you know, he, he fights now that I'm thinking of it. I'm not looking at anything. Look, my hands are right here. I think it was UFC 68. Now that I think of it, I, I'm a stickler for these numbers, but um, he fights UFC 68 some 30 plus UFCs later, UFC 101 to be exact, you attend your very first UFC in person in Philadelphia. I believe the story was you're 16 years old, you're living in California, you go and visit your, your father's family in Philadelphia uh, over the summer, and you had just watched UFC 100, George St. Pierre, Brock Lesnar, and they're like, hey, UFC's in town, you attend, you're not really a UFC fan, right? Like, to the best of my knowledge, and I'd love for you to tell the story, uh, you're not really all that interested in the storylines, the fighters, but it was one particular fight that may have opened your eyes to the sport. Yeah, on that Forrest, Forrest Griffin, Anderson Silva. I was a big fan of Forrest Griffin. I actually was going for a Forrest Griffin in the fight, but then getting ready for the fight, I was watching a bunch of like silver tapes and stuff. And I was like, oh, this guy can strike slick. And then when they fought, I was like, oh, he's going up in weight too. I was like, that's dope. I was like, he probably walks around it that way. That's the way you're supposed to fight. And to me, it was a great fight, you know, um, it was, it was just a great fight. I liked it. You know, I liked it a lot. It just opened my eyes to like, I think I could do that, you know? And then sure enough, you know, Anderson Silva's quote unquote retirement fight, who knows, right? Uh, right. I was a part of that card. So I think that was pretty awesome. You know, I think, I think the whole career, the way it's turned out is pretty awesome. I think getting Travis in my corner, somebody who knew I needed to learn grappling earlier in the game. It's like, I, I just think everything works out pretty fantastically. You know, I'm a blessed person. I'm happy with it all. That 16-year-old kid, as, as you're leaving the arena in Philadelphia that night, are you starting to dream? Are you, are you thinking like, oh, this could be a fun career? I would like to be in that cage, or is it still kind of too fresh at that point? Yeah, yeah, it was definitely something I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm just like, I'm going to, I told myself straight up, I was like, I'm going to do this. Like, there's no what? way around it. Like, I'm, I'm going to, like, I'm going to fight here. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to fight right there in Philadelphia. I'm going to have all the family out here. And then I got to fight in Philadelphia. I had all the family out there, you know, got tore up after the fights. It was awesome, you know, but uh yeah, I mean, everything I've ever imagined, you know, like like literally everything I've ever imagined, slowly coming, slowly coming to fruition. Besides becoming Batman, I haven't became Batman yet, but you know, we can work on that later on. I'm fighting, I'm fighting the Joker, so maybe I am Batman. <laughs> wow. you know I, mean? I call myself Ooh. Black Man all the time, so let's do it. <laughs> you know, that is amazing. And yes, ten years uh, later, you fight on a Philadelphia card last March of uh, 2019. So was that a dream of yours to be Batman? Yeah, yeah, I was like, I was like, bro. That's when I started training martial arts. I was like, I was like, bro, if I get really good at martial arts, I was like, I can be like Batman. I was like, I can take out all the hardcore drug dealers and keep their money because I'm not rich. But uh, now I'm making crazy. good money. So did, it, did it occur to you that his nickname is the Joker, or did this yeah. happen? That's insane. You a uh, kid wants to be Batman and you're fighting a guy named the Joker. This is yeah. like this is your chance. Yeah, yeah. What so, are the chances well, you walk like, out to the Batman theme song, or at least no. like? You won't do it? No? I mean, no. it just kind of feels perfect. No? Yeah. I love I love the vibe before the fight. You know, it's like, okay. I can fight mad. I can fight sad. I can fight however. But, you know, it's like a, a good example of me not fighting with the right emotions is probably the Brandon Allen fight. You know, I had a lot of still down to fight. You know, fighting is amazing. Love the fight. You know, just when I'm in the like Zen mode, I think I just fight the best. So it's like when the music's good and I get that little vibe going on, you know, it's like, yeah, baby, let's go, let's do it. And so that's that's just the way I like to do it. What was going on surrounding the Brandon Allen fight? Nah, just a bunch of, you know what I mean? Life was just with me. I was letting the beat me up, you know? Gotta learn how to slip and dodge. I like, you know, I like driving Dodgers, you know? And I always say I like Dodgers because I like to dodge. The, you know, you got to mm -hmm. dodge on the road. So I just wasn't dodging, right? You know what I mean? By the way, speaking of which, what kind of car do you drive? Because I saw your your uh, speedometer is a very old school one. Yeah, I got a, I got an old school. I got a nineteen. What's that? Sixty eight Impala. 
Wow. And then I have a 86 Ram Charger that's getting still getting worked on, rebuilding the whole thing. And then we got a uh, I got me a a little Dodge Charger 2019 Scat Pack. So okay. I like car. I like I like to drive. And you like shoes as well. I love shoes. Why'd you put I your shoes, shoes by the way in the microwave? They change colors. So if oh. uh, if it's hot outside, you know, if the, if the sun hits it, it's kind of like a solar type shoe. You know, you can put a lighter next to it or anything like that. The heat makes the shoe change color. Like it goes a whole bunch of different crazy colors. But if it's not in the heat, if it's cold outside, you can rock them as just like plain black shoes with a white gum bottom. So, you know, it's like, I like it. They're, they're you know, those Civilis, Nike, Nike SB Civilis, they're, you know, they're some badass shoes. <laughs> they're some nice shoes, bro. They're some real nice shoes. And yeah. and speaking of your social media, your name is Trailblaze to Top. Yeah. W- w- what's the significance behind that? You know what, bro? I ain't gonna lie to you. I probably made that that Instagram when I was like 17, 16, and I was like smoking a lot of weed and I called myself Trailblazer. And so I was like, yeah, Trailblaze, Trailblaze to the top, baby. Oh, I got you. And so I always told myself, I was like, I'm never gonna quit smoking, but I'm gonna make it to the top. And you know, that's just been my motto. Every motto I have, I stick by it, try not to fall yeah. away. I respect that. Um, okay, so you 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 win your last fight just a couple of weeks ago. That's your fourth win of 2020. You make a lot of headlines for the performance, but you probably make more headlines for the aftermath with with the champ cage side, Israel Desanya. And that's great. I mean, that's that's great fortune for you. The fact that he's there, like what are the chances that he's just sitting there in the empty apex, but he was there oh, to eventually knew you knew you knew in advance that he would be there, right? I mean, I seen him I seen him fight week and I was like I was like, uh, he's probably here to do some media. He's probably going to watch Anderson Silva's last fight. I was like, depending on how good Uriah is, you know, if Robert Whitaker's not trying to fight at the end of the year, maybe he's trying to fight at the end of the year, maybe he'll take on Uriah. You know, it's like, whoever he wants to fight, he gets to fight. So it's like, you know, then I seen him, we had a couple words. So, you know, it's just What were the words? I I was just telling him, you know, like I was going to buy his shoes when his shoes came out, you know, respect to the Puma. And, you know, you know, he was kind of being a little, you know, being the champ. He was being the champ, baby. You know, when you got the, when you got the belt, you know, you got to you know, everybody in the division know that you're the man. And, you know, I don't care about that. You know, it's like at the end of the day, you're a man. I'm a man. You know, don't try and get boasty with me. And then it was just bringing back flashbacks. You know, I was like, I, when I was walking over there, I was walking over there kind of aggressive. I had my shirt off and stuff. And I was just thinking about like how in L.A., you know, he tried to treat me like I was a new kid, like I was a freshman on the block. You know what I mean? Kind of like kind of felt like I was, he was trying to punk me in a way, you know. And so I was like, man, let me see if I can. It was out in L.A. when I was fighting Thiago Santos. You know, they were doing media the same day that uh, we were doing weigh-in, the mock weigh-ins. Yeah. So they were getting done with media, and they were going uh, – I believe they were going up the stairs, and we were going down the stairs. And I said something like, yo, that's Izzy right there. He ain't that big. And he was like, what the say? You know, try to turn and, like, get aggressive and stuff. And uh, my coach was like, hey, chill out to him. And James Vick was pushing me down the stairs. And was like, bro, you're going to kicked out the UFC before you even get in. Chill out. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Let me chill. But it just – the more I sat at home and the more I thought about it, I was like, hey, I hope this fool didn't think he punked me. I was like, because, you know, I don't get punked. So I hope he don't think he punked me. And then, so when I seen him, I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna say something about this. And then I was thinking about it and I was like, ah, I'm probably tripping, you know? And then we were getting, um, we we're getting COVID tested again. You know, you get COVID tested one more time before the fight. He was getting COVID tested, of course, so he could go to the fight. You know, they're doing the protocol. Uh, and as he was walking out, the security guard seen him and was like, hey, Kev, security guard sees me all the time. You know, I'm cool with everybody on the property. I'm always there. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm there quite a bit. I've been there a month out of, out of this year. So that's not bad. Really five weeks out of this year. So it's not bad. Uh, he sees me, he goes, when are you going to fight Izzy? And I was like, whenever the time comes, it comes. I was like, I'll keep working for it. And Izzy goes, would you say, you know, kind of like takes his earbud out, tries to say it all like aggressive and shit. And I was like, I was talking to security guard, but I can be talking to you if you want me to. And like, as I'm saying that he puts his earbud back in and walks off and I'm like, this here thinks he's huh i'm like okay bro we're not in the octagon right now we don't have a fight schedule so as far as i'm concerned this is a street scrap and i'll beat your ass you know what i mean i'm poking eyes slapping nuts i'm getting dirty with it you know what i mean i know how good you are we'll get active so when i seen him outside the cage you know i didn't see him dancing to my music and i got mad i just got mad i just started thinking about everything and i was like i'm I'm going to say something to this man and then he laughed and i got head kicked and i was like okay i'm definitely going to say something to this man so then I said something to the man. That was long. My bad, guys. But yeah. Okay. What, what what did you say to him? I just called him a boy. I, I thought it was funny. When I walked away, when I seen him, when I told him his Pumas were going to, you know, I'll buy his Pumas when they come out, you know, and I was walking away. He tells his teammate, he says, that's the guy I was telling you about. 
in my eyes, I'm like, why am I the guy you're talking about? I'm not top 20, you know what I mean? I'm barely getting there. I know I fought a lot this year, but why are you worried about me? You're the champ, the target's on your back, the target's not on my back. You shouldn't be worried about little old Kev, but you know, now I see why he's worried about little old Kev. So, so after the victory, you were calling him boy. Were you call, were you saying anything else to him? Yeah, I was just, you know, letting him know you're my boy. You, my little boy. You'll be my little boy when I get done with you. You know, he reminds me of my little brother, you know, his style and everything. He's going to be my little boy when I get done with him. You know what I mean? So is he, I mean, now you have a mission, right? Now, now you have like a story, a backstory, a beef, if you will, with the champ. Is this part, is this part of the motivation? Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely. You play with me, you know, you think, you think of something soft over here and nothing soft over here. I'm going to show you what's up. When I get the opportunity, I'm going to show him what's up. You know, that's just the way I get down. Uh, we talked again after it was all over and done with, you know, and it's like, that didn't go so swell. It's just, we're just not going to be friends. I'm cool with that. I didn't sign on to the sport to be friends with anybody anyways. And, uh, you know, Marvin played with me one time. He can get it. Derek Brunson's always in my inbox. Like he's my grandpa or my dad or something. He can get it. You know, and it's like, I just don't play, you know? And it's like, if you want to be friends, say you want to be friends. Just come out and be like, hey, dude, I think you're pretty cool. I want to be your friend. All right, cool. I can understand that. That's what's up, bro. I think you're pretty cool too. I could be your friend. But all that playing and like I said, don't act like we're buddies and I don't even know you. That's just, mm. to me, like that's, that's fake. And I don't like fake. And, and by the way, so you say you saw Izzy again after the event? Yeah, we seen it. I was sitting at the cabana. We were smoking, drinking, you know, having a good old time. And I seen Izzy and, and uh, he didn't what want none of my whiskey. So I didn't want to shake his hand. Wait, so he came up to you? Nah, he walked by, said he didn't see me, whatever. Uh, Rashad Evans, shout out to Rashad Evans. I, that, that's something I really need to do. Shout out to Rashad Evans. He didn't mean no hard feelings or nothing like that. He was trying to, you know, get two, two young guys to, you know, to understand where each other was coming from and be cool. But I'm just not the guy. So I just, I didn't respond well. You know, it's, I just don't respond well. It's Izzy's well, Izzy. Exchange? When I see him and when I catch him, I catch him. But it is what it is. I just don't respond well to a lot of things. So, you know. Were words exchanged at night after the event? Yeah, words were exchanged. But, you know, he say, she say, you know. Okay. <laughs> he'll tell it. If, if Look, I'll keep working like I said. Once I get there, he'll tell his story. I'll tell my story. We can meet in the middle and see what really happens. You Fair know? enough. Uh, you beat Jack Hermanson on December 5th. How far away do you think you are from the Izzy conversation, the title conversation? Uh, you know what? He's doing things at 205. If John Jones gets the belt at freaking heavyweight, so you're getting me hype right now. John Jones gets the belt at heavyweight. He'll probably go up there and fight John Jones for the heavyweight title. John Jones has been looking a little slow these days. So unless he gets his hands on him and can just break him completely apart, you know, and Izzy doesn't look like he's easy to take down. So unless John Jones goes in there with the proper body lock and use some of that Greco, I don't see him taking him down. I see that being a good fight. I think Izzy has a lot of options ahead of him. You know, coming back for a little old Kev, I'm going to have to put in a lot of work to do it. So that being said, I ain't trying to fight for no intern belt. Let's say I go out there and I smoke Jack the way I plan on smoking Jack, right? Touch him with a few right hands, touch him with a few left hooks, catch him with an uppercut, because that's what Kinnear caught him with, right? So catch him with a good uppercut, put him down on his butt. It's like I walk around at 196 pounds, you know? I have leverage. I'm tall. I'm long. So I can fight at 85. No problem. But if they had a 75 weight class, I'd be there. But they do have two belts at 170 pounds. And I think one belt doesn't belong at welterweight. You know what I mean? I think you know what I mean. So maybe I go out and slap somebody after the fight. Let everybody know I'm really a bad And then I can get a bad fight. That's what I'm shooting for. Fuck all the other. You know, it's like I'm going to put on work to get the bad title while Izzy's up a weight class doing his thing. I'm going to go down south a little bit, grab some strap. And then cut back up to 85 and fight for a real belt. I don't want to fight for no intern belt. That sounds ridiculous. Wow. Okay, so you just laid out a lot there. So beat Jack Hermanson and then go down to fight Jorge Masvidal? I like Masvidal, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I like mean, it's, it's going to take a lot of work. I got to have a big name to fight Masvidal, right? So You know, it's like, can I say I might... something, Kevin? I feel like you put yourself down a lot. You keep saying little old me and I got to... You're, you're a big deal, man. You're about to fight in the main event against Jack Hermanson. Stop putting yourself down here. You know, a lot of guys fought in the main event. You don't even know. You had, People don't even remember them. They weren't even in the UFC anymore. People forgot all about those guys. You know, it's like, you got to make your mark. You know, it's about like, to be the fighter of the year in 2020, for God's sakes. Two other you know fighters what? Maybe, you've done. I want to, you know, Jack, then get Yo Romero. I know Yo and uh, Jorge are real close. So if I can get Yo, <laughs> then Jorge will be like, oh, he got my boy. And then I'll get his boom. There, that's how you do it. No offense to nobody, baby. It's all business, but. I got you. I got to get freaking paid, baby. 
and and one other thing that I wanted to ask you before I let you go, um, you know, you have a win over Jeff Neal, a very impressive win over Jeff Neal. But for the longest time, it seemed like Jeff Neal was getting a little more love, a little more buzz, bigger fights than you. Did that bother you? Not at all. Not at all. Just like it doesn't, just like most people always ask me how I feel about uh, um, Buckley getting the KO yeah. and possibly getting KO of the year. One you have a win over Buckley this year. Too. Yeah, I, I think it's amazing, bro. I don't wish nothing bad on nobody. You know, it's like, I'm not a hater. So it's like, like I said, I, I just got into it with Izzy in front of everybody. If he goes up and gets a couple belts, they have every right to call that man the GOAT. You know, and it's like uh, with Geoff Neal, I, dude, I want to see Geoff Neal. I never even wanted to fight Geoff Neal. You know what I mean? It's like, I didn't want to fight Geoff Neal. You know, my grandpa used to always say, man, there's a plenty of people in the world to fight. Geoff going to make it. You going to make it. We don't need no black on black crime. You know, I didn't even want to fight Geoff. You know, it's like. Props to Geoff. I'm glad he's doing good. You know, I hope I get to help him go over there and get ready for the Stephen Wonderboy Thompson fight. I can imitate pretty well. You know, it's like props to Safe's Gym. I used to give them a hard time coming up in the rankings because that was the only people to fight. They had the name, you know, it's like, but nah, you know, I wish all of them the best unless wow. we're fighting. If we're fighting right. or if you play with me a certain way, you know, off with your head. Other than that, I wish you the best, you know. After me and Jack fight, we can go drink some Howard Head whiskey. I'm down for that. But, you know, I'll take his throat if he gives me his throat. Just like he'll take mine if I give him it, if I give it to him, you know? It's just part of the game. Uh, do you have a prediction on how you think it, it will play out? Yeah, I'm knocking him out. Okay. Normally, I'm like, Travis, I want to sub this guy so I can show you that I was really worthy of the black belt. But, you know, it's like me and Travis had a nice long conversation. And it's like he gave me the black belt for a reason. He knows what I can do. He knows what I'm capable of. <laughs> You know, it's and my self defense is, is what it's really all about in my head at the end of the day. MMA is awesome, but self defense is where I, you know, it's where I started from. It's where I'm always going to be. You know, it's like when it's all over, said, and done with, I'll probably teach self defense. Uh, so as long as I can defend myself at all times, I'm good. I'm going to beat the brakes off of Jack if I get the chance. So he better not give me the chance. He better shoot like his life depends on it and then shoot again and then shoot again. It's like, Jack, I'm going to give you a secret. The best way to take me down is to chain four to five takedowns. Wow. Or wait until I get tired. Other than that, screwed, baby. And they're giving me four weeks to get ready for the fight. I doubt I'll be tired. Well, this has been a revelation. This has been a lot of fun, Kevin. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry for taking so long to talk to you. I have enjoyed this immensely. Congratulations. Oh, before we get off, you yeah. you, you, don't, you remember my uh, first fight against Thiago? Thiago Santos. Yeah. I, yeah. Was coming out, I was coming out the little media thing from talking to DC and a few of the other guys, right? And my grandpa, he's, he's annoying, I know, but I love him to death. And he goes, it's Ariel Hawani, it's Ariel Hawani. And I was like, Pop, we're not big enough for Ariel Hawani. And he goes, hey, Ariel, you, you should interview my grandson. He's fighting Thiago Santos. And you said, who's your grandson? And he goes, Kevin Holland. And you go, yeah, his day will come one day. I ne That is a lie. I would never say something like hey, that. Hey, we can ping Pop in. We can bring, ping Pop bring in. Pop, bring Pop in right now. I would never. I would. How do, I will we, do, say how do we bring Pop in? Call him up on your phone right now. It won't work like that, will it? Oh, is this? Are you doing this on your phone right now? Yeah, I'm doing it on Skype. Uh, all right, listen. It's I all would, right, we're gonna have this conversation again. I would you know, never I'm say that. I have numbers. You can call you're, Pop. You're telling me that I said to your grandfather, Mr. Holland, is it a Mr. Holland? Nah, Mr. Shepherd, Mr. Shepherd, Shep Dog. But I you. said that Kevin Holland's day will come on it my will come. life. I will, I will never say that to anyone. I have never said that to anyone. I will put I'm my kids. I'm telling you. No. Hey, that's why I give Oren such a hard time. But look, look, it doesn't bother me because I knew the day would come and it's came. Okay. Well, it's a great Motivation. story, but it's not a true story. I'll tell you that much. Hey, 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 watch. I'm telling you. I'm <laughs> right. telling you. I'm telling you. We'll, we'll agree to disagree on that one. Uh, regardless, I've enjoyed this immensely. Congratulations. I great. enjoyed it. I'm By the way, too. don't forget, I'm the one saying you should be fighter of the year. All right. So I know, the tables I know. That's, why I told, that's why I told Oren. I said, I said, you know what? I said, I need to do that interview with him. Oh, wait a I second. Did. You've been holding a grudge on me for the last two years. Yeah. Damn. I didn't know we were beefing. I, I We weren't. I just was like, <laughs> when I get, when I get good enough, I'm gonna get on that Ariel Hawani show. I was like, I'm gonna let him know. Well, here we are. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful congrats day. on the year. And good luck December 5th. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, thank you, Ariel. I appreciate it. Hey, and just because I hold a grudge, that don't mean I don't like your interviews, baby. I love your interviews. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.